All right, welcome back to my channel this week. You are not going to want to miss what we're covering this week. It's going to be so great. We're talking about the 11 ways um, that you can save money, because who doesn't want to save money when you're backpacking through New Zealand? And I have Robin here from NZ Pocket Guide, uh, who is just the expert in this area. So I, me and my family, we do a lot of what they call tramping here. It's not backpacking, but um, yeah. I don't know all of the ins and outs for travelers that are coming, so that's why I have Robin here with us today, and so it's going to be good. And you're going to want to check out the NZ Pocket Guide website. It has everything on it. It's free for you to use, just anything and everything you need to know about New Zealand. So here we go, 11 tips. Are you moving or traveling to New Zealand? Well, I have a resource for you that is going to be so helpful. I know that journey. I have done it firsthand. I've even done it twice. <laughs> I understand what you're going through. It's so exciting, but so daunting at the same time. You have so many questions and have no idea exactly what to do about different situations, especially if you've never even been to this country. And so this resource is something that I have created. It's called the New Zealand Training Hub. And what it includes is video training on how to set up life here, understanding the culture, understanding how things work here, and so it gives you like that head start. So if you're a planner or someone that like kind of, there's enough new things that it would be nice to just understand how to do things in a new country. So if you are that person, this training hub is for you. Not only does it do all of those videos, but it has a community built in. So when you join the training hub, you get access to the community of people on the same journey as you. These people could be like your best friends and they probably will because all of us, have made a friend when we first moved here that were kind of going through the same thing and that's who we learned everything from. <laughs> but they also didn't have someone like me helping them out with some video trading. <laughs> and in addition to that, you will have access to me every month. I'll do a live Q&A just to answer any questions that might not get answered in the training hub. You can also request additional trainings. There's really no reason to not check this out. So why does it make sense for an American to be talking about what life is like in New Zealand? Well, let me tell you why. Because a New Zealander knows no different. And so it needs to be someone who has come into the culture and saying, oh, this is different. Now, I don't know everything. I only know my own experience, but I am a really good resource to say, hey, this is how they do this here. This is probably not how they do this in your country, or maybe it's different. And so you really need that outside person that knows the differences. So if you're moving or traveling to New Zealand, this training hub is for you. Check it out. Should we get started by explaining what is backpacking in New Zealand for you American Oh, viewers? yes. Because it's slightly let's different. It's That's basically good. your classic gap here, right? It's taking a year off, coming oh, okay. to New Zealand, and explore yeah. New Zealand. While um, I think in the US, you guys take that as long-term hiking, like uh, multi-day hikes. Is that what yes, you're Yes, it would be backpacking? called backpacking. Yeah, okay, cool. Yep, um, because you carry everything on your back. <laughs> okay, so in New Zealand, it would be more like taking a gap year into New yeah. Zealand, having an overseas experience, your, your classic OE. Right, but yeah. they, just so you know, in the US, they don't really take a gap year. It's not really a thing. You guys should start doing that. Yes, you good. should. <laughs> I'm so mad that I didn't, to be honest. <laughs> because it's like it's not a first thing. tip. Take a gap year. Yeah, take, first tip. Take a gap year. There you year. go. All right. <laughs> Definitely. All right. Here we go. We got lots to get through, and you're gonna want to stay tuned to the end because we got lots of tips after we get through these eleven. Indeed, this is gonna be a long video. Okay, first tip. Uh, you want to make friends along the way. So um, when traveling around, you probably, especially when if you're taking a gap year, you probably gonna come solo. Uh, you may want to make some friends at the hostel to do some activities with them, to uh, hitch a ride with them. You also want to make friends when you settle in some areas just to have a little bit of work, you know, working and, and you know, kind of saving up a little bit of money for your next uh, journey or your the next leg of your trip. Yeah. Uh, make some friends along the way it usually opens a lot of different doors and opens many, many different opportunities. So that's the first thing. Don't be shy, step out of your comfort zone and make some friends. Uh, number two, I have make your own meals. When traveling around New Zealand, you can stay in hostels or backpackers accommodations. Uh, those places are super safe. They are not like the classic horror movies you usually um, see. They're very safe. Okay, um, that's good to know because yes. I'm just not sure about that. Yes, okay. they're, they're very safe. They're great. But the best thing that hostel have, uh, uh, they usually have uh, a big communal kitchen. Uh, that's a great place to make friends. You know, it's very easy to break the ice while uh, cooking a meal. But you can make your own food and save ton of money. That's mm -hmm. going to be really different 
than you know having to literally eat out every single day and on top of it you can save even more money by using the free shelf the free food shelf in every hostel so a lot of people that kind of check out and, and leave and don't want to carry a lot of food they just leave what? the leftovers of the food on the free shelf and you can make entire meals out of free food shelves i did not know uh, this especially in a port of entry cities such as christchurch wellington oh, really? oh and that's Oakland. so cool and yeah. you guys will love these communal kitchens i know it may feel weird and you're like what is this it was weird for me but i loved it and you're watching what other people are everybody's looking at what are you making you know yeah. what are you making and then like can i have some salt or you know you can borrow some things or people just like where are you from it's very cool try it nice the next thing that uh, we have is using discounts so well, it's pretty pretty obvious, but you know, if you find some discount cards or all those kind of things, yeah. and we, we talk a lot uh, on our website about like ways to get discount, to get best deal and everything, shop okay. around yeah. and uh, you'll be able to save some money. Uh, the first price that you're seeing usually is not the best price, so shop around, save some dough. Yeah, and Dead Pocket Guide for all of your deals. Yes, yes, we do have sometimes some deals in there. Not that many. I don't want to lie to people. I'm sorry. <laughs> well, uh, you just said to go to the website. Yes, so but I we, we, on the it. website we talk about, yeah, uh, that doesn't matter. It's fine. Moving on, do some woofing. Do you know what is woofing? I do, yes. but they probably don't. So uh, woofing is basically barking like a dog. So if you put yourself on your knees and start barking like a dog, then money usually rains from the sky. Um, is it right? No. No, okay. Right. So Woofing is the Worldwide Organization of Organic Farmers. Uh, that's what Woofing stands for. Oh and my gosh, it does. World, what is it? Worldwide World? Organization of wow. Organic Farmers. So it's there basically it a big program worldwide where uh, mm. organic farmers are able to find some help for their usually smaller type of farms in order to um, help like kind of cultivate their crops or, or do whatever farming chores I needed to be done mm. and in exchange you would get free food and free lodging for uh, the time that you are so usually the deal is that you work four hours for a day and you get uh, all the meals and you get uh, your accommodation it's well done four hours a day usually you work four hours a day and you get meal and accommodation if you work extra well you need to be paid Oh, really? That's usually what the deal is. It obviously will depend oh, on the I location thought it was and everything. Eight hours. Yeah, okay. That would be a lot for just free food and accommodation. You okay. will not get a good deal out because of Because it's, it's working for a farmer, so it's hard yeah. work, right? Yeah, it is. It is. Yeah. Does that include like the, all the picking stuff? That yeah, yeah. Do? So okay. sometimes, yeah, yeah. sometimes you have some of those. I uh, remember that in order to do woofing in New Zealand legally, you do need to have a work visa because it's still considered mm. as work. work. So yeah. a working holiday visa, which we'll talk about a little bit later, is a great option. Yeah, that's cool. Next up, uh, taking a cheaper transport options. A lot of people want to rent a car when traveling in New Zealand, but there's a lot of different ways you can travel around. Uh, bus networks are extensive and extremely cheap in New Zealand. They could be a great option for you to yeah. see more of the country, not having to drive, be able to enjoy the scenery and meet friends along the way. Yeah, yeah, and they're nice. They have bathrooms and Wi-Fi and... <laughs> You know, that is, that is a fancy bus. It's a fancy bus. I barely have bathroom and Wi Fi in my house. <laughs> uh. It's nicer than some places you'll stay. Wow. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> I'm not talking about your house. <laughs> All right, uh, the next thing that I have on the list is uh, saving uh, megabytes and saving money. So in New Zealand, you know, Wi-Fi is uneven. Uh, mm, we were just talking about, uh, yes. about Wi-Fi right now. It, it's not necessarily super great everywhere and all the time. So it can cost you quite a lot of money to actually try to chase Wi-Fi everywhere mm. and try to get vouchers for this and get, you know, on different plans and everything. Just realize that sometimes you have to unplug, be okay with it, and that will save you a lot of dough and, mon and time as well when traveling yeah. um, around and trying to... <laughs> find a good Wi-Fi and everything. But if you're really desperate and want to connect with home, on nzpocketguide.com, we actually have all, I think there is 12 of them, or 12 favorite free Wi-Fi spots, which actually have really good Wi-Fi, better than what we currently have in this house. Just saying. Um, oh, that's really helpful. We have really terrible Wi-Fi in this house. Yeah, wow. Well. Uh, okay, the next one I have is just a hard question to ask yourself in front of a mirror. Look at it at yourself in the eyes and say, do you really need to do all those activities which are all $500 each? Do you need to do three different skydive, two different bungee jump, etc.? You yes. don't necessarily need to do all... Oh, you do? Yes. Okay, well, you do. <laughs> if you do, well, here you go. Uh, you know, make it rain. If you don't and you're here to save money, because that's the theme of that video, uh, maybe... <laughs> Maybe you want to yeah, uh, kind I'll of realize. Farm. Yeah, oh, you go. also want to have a look at yeah. which one you want to do. All right. <laughs> and for those activities you decide not to do, that's point number eight. You're going to want to go for a walk. Yes, um, go for a walk. There's plenty of amazing hikes in New Zealand, isn't it? Guys, it's, it is the thing yeah. to do here. So there's really a ton of amazing hikes. They usually are free to do. And so that's a great way to fill up an itinerary with fantastic once-in-a-lifetime experiences without having to break the bank. 
Moving on, the next one we have is a working for accommodation. We just talked about it, about woofing, but there's other ways to work for accommodation. You can actually help out in hostels. Uh, you can actually stay with locals. There's many different ways uh, to work for accommodation, which is not just woofing, and that'd be able to save you big bucks. Yeah, yeah, because I've had a lot of couch surfers stay with me um, as they're kind of going through, and then they get like a nanny job and um, or like they'll stay with somebody and work at the local cafe. So there's lots of cool options, so yeah. Yeah, and while we're talking about accommodation, when picking a hostel, what about you pick a hostel that has good perks? Uh, rather than oh. having to stay in a hostel and then after having to pay for a kayaking tour or, or, or a surfing trip or anything like that, what about you stay in a hostel that has inclusions such as free surfball hire or free kayak hire, etc. Oh, free bike that's nice. That's a huge that. tip, I didn't know there's that. There's plenty of hostels that have like, especially free bike hires, for example, um, many, many mm. hostels will give you bikes for free and that save you, you know, you're renting a bike for about mm. a day in cities in New Zealand, it's between 50 to $70. So that's no, a big is. saving. Uh, yeah, it won't be the best bike in the world, but you know, you will get the free right. bike. So why not? So check out what perks you have. We make sure that we mention the kind of perks that we do like for each hostel when we talk about each hostel, either on our channel or on the website. So yeah, when picking your hostel, don't just look at trying to get the best deal. Look at, you know, what kind of inclusion you right, can have. Right, the whole value yes, that you're getting. Yes, yeah. there's, there's a fantastic hostel in, in Raglan, for example, that will give you free surfboard, free bike hire, and even have a jacuzzi right in the middle of the, you know, uh, the hostel and it's all free so that's pretty damn good just is it close to the beach like can you get it's right really it's right there the yeah oh it's not gosh. it's really not bad anyway so there's plenty of hostel it's like, like the that, surfing yeah. area yeah. of the north island so and then the last tip is definitely find a travel buddy because that can cut down costs right because then you can share costs yeah definitely so uh, i'm not saying travel with somebody because usually when you travel i'm a big proponent of traveling alone and we probably will talk yeah, about yeah. that okay. uh, later on your channel again but uh, yeah, so a big problem of traveling alone, but finding travel buddies along the way for the activities that you want to do along the way is always really good. Like I can't remember how many times I've got a family pass with a couple of other backpackers that I was traveling around. It's oh, like, that's a good idea. Those not? are much you know cheaper. I mean? Yeah, exactly. First, we cram ourselves at four in the car so like that we don't have to sort out on transportation right, to go the there. Transport. Okay. And then we get ourselves a family pass and pish, bash, bosh, you all sort it. Oh, you save big good. bucks. So yeah, just these kind of things. Finding travel buddies along the way is always a good idea. Okay, nice. And also you share you sh shave money on like you know usually after that you make food at the hostel which I always like doing and you know you all put your money together we all to put make it a meal. together so oh, it's that's cheaper true. yeah yeah it's yeah. always cheaper to cook for multiple people than just for no one that's person, true so, yeah. yeah that's a good idea well that's really good I learned a lot there I hope that these are helpful for you um, we also have prepared some extra tips to talk to you about today um, so I'm gonna go through a couple of them and then I'll have Robin explain them. So traveling alone, what do you mean by that? Well, I just I just spoke about it. I'm a big proponent of traveling alone that allows you to make no compromise, not having to pay for activities that you kind of not necessarily want to do, but the person you're traveling with really want to do. It's a great way to also meet more people because it's uh, less uh, scary to kind of approach uh, people uh, oh, you know, and make true. friends along the way rather than having like, you know, like a couple, two a or group. three people, a group. Yeah. yeah, it's less scary. So you'll meet more people and you'll save money along the way because you get to do only what you want to do. And it's usually better in my opinion. Okay, another extra tip, make a budget and stick to it. I know it's hard. Yeah, that's, I mean, it's that's hard. pretty It's hard in even. life in general yeah, and really hard. hard on holiday. Yeah, <laughs> it's very hard. But yeah, like seriously, just know how much money you have to spend for this holiday and stick to it and know when you need to make some cuts and when you need to do a hike rather than do a bungee. Right, because those bungee jumps are expensive. Yes, and very scary. You can see a video on my channel where I chicken out and Ooh, my girlfriend we'll has to do above. it instead of me. Yeah. You really? Yeah. Which one did you do the really big one in Queenstown? Uh, the ledge bungee in Queenstown is not the big one. That's the oh. one when you have to run. And uh, yeah. yeah, I chickened out, almost passed out. It's, <gasps> it's pretty funny. And then I, t I turned to Laura and I said, Laura, well, then you have to do it. <laughs> and you know what? Balls to the walls. She did it. So yeah, she's uh, she's my better half for many oh, really my. valid so reasons. So did you actually do it? I did a bungee when I was younger, uh, but I didn't do this one. Oh, I you actually got scared. Oh, I, I almost passed scary. out. I mean, I will show you the video. It's really Yeah, funny. we'll have to see the video. But like, yeah, my kids did bungee jumping this year. They're teenagers. They didn't even hesitate. My son just went, Bump. Oh, I did it when I was younger. I did it like, you know, I was, I was one of those like, silly people. I did I'm screaming, yeah. but he's, Bump. Yeah. It's, yeah. No way. Height is scary. I'm but, just trying to imagine myself like, boom, like that. Yeah. Anyway. A I'm fine with skydiving, you know. I've done many skydiving and I love skydiving. I just you love skydiving. Yeah. Have I you like to skydive like by yourself? No, or you need to specialize on it. Like, yeah, it's, it's, okay. it's like it's more of a process. I don't know. I'm not in that time, world. Yeah. 
skydiving. Yeah. I've done the fake skydive, you know, like oh, yeah, in the yeah. wind tunnel. Well, you don't <laughs> skydiving, that's about the same. <laughs> it's not. Yeah, it is. You're great. You're an adventurer. <laughs> Hey, baby steps, baby steps. Okay, yes. okay, Mister. I didn't get off the bungee. Okay. <laughs> yeah, I don't really have a. I don't have a stand to stay on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You, can, yeah. Don't you don't have, have a leg to stand there on. You go. There it no is. No legs. Leg less rubbing today. Okay, right. number three. Plan according to your travel time. Because sometimes, you know, are you saying like you want to build in time for fun things that you see or? Yeah, and also like a, it would cost you more money to try to do too much. Um, not just because of uh, activities okay. will cost you more, yeah. but just because you will have to go back and forth and you go to too many places and everything so oh, realize okay. how much how much time you have mm -hmm. and make the most of each spot you are it always costs less money to actually go to a you know let's say three points in one week and actually have a couple of days to do those kind of things and mm -hmm. settle somewhere rather than kind of oh, try to go everywhere no it's true uh, which is a bit I more have chaos learned that yeah. lesson as well yeah yeah um, and then travel on the shoulder season that's a good point like before yeah. and after summer right yeah so the busy season in New Zealand is usually from December to February that's literally where all the locals and all all the international tourists are traveling not all but like a vast majority of them are so if you travel outside of those months you will be able to save money and have a better experience in New Zealand because there's gonna be less people around yeah it's so true if you can do that time period oh, highly recommend it okay pick the best transport option for you um, so we talked a little bit yeah, about that a little bit before, that, yeah. but yeah, there is many different transport options around. And even when it comes to just buses, let's say you decide you're going to be traveling for uh, by bus. There is so many different bus tour companies, and there is even, there is even like bus trans, uh, like just international bus like thing that you have like is it a bit like greyhound in the u.s but like classy um, but classy yeah that's uh, a really good way to put it yeah and so interesting and even just when using intercity you have different options you can buy your your bus ticket from one one point to the other but there's also something called a flexi pass or a travel pass which are mm. two different ways to travel you travel with by trips or you travel by hours of travel and that allows you to be able to save some money along the way uh, there is plenty of comparison online online so you'll be able to check that mm. out and see which one is the best option for you but there is really everything in the in, in the range oh that's great um okay so speaking of which what i see a lot of people coming in that they're coming in for their gap year is they buy a car because they can you can kind of camp in it you know you always see the the mattresses in the back and the little things through the shades for the windows for when they're sleeping so um yeah, so buying a car and then you sell it at the end when you leave. Yeah, so let's talk about a couple of things here. Yeah. First, don't get scammed. Uh, there is a lot. Of, usually, backpackers buying mm. cars are going to be the one that people and locals are going to try to sell. Literally, the rundown dead lemon car, basically, like the worst thing mm. ever, uh, all rusty and everything. You can see on our channel us being scammed uh, when buying cars. Um, so just, you know, you have to know a little bit about vehicles in order to kind of make sure that you can do a couple of checks yourself. It's something you can do some homework at home yeah. before traveling to New Zealand. The next thing that you want to keep in mind is all the self-containment uh, rules. They have changed recently in New Zealand. You cannot um, camp everywhere just because you have a mattress at the back of your car. Mm. You have to have uh, to meet certain self-containment uh, requirements and uh, you have to make sure that you are abiding by the bylaws of all the local council there is plenty of information on our website it's a very boring subject to talk about but it's something you really need like to... you just need to have a yeah. porta potty right no that's oh, the thing there's the much thing more to that. that so okay. no that is a misconception <laughs> don't do that you cannot have a porta potty and just a mattress that doesn't work so um, what if i get caught doing that do uh, i get fined yeah the fine has just been increased recently i think oh I don't want to say anything wrong, but okay, yeah. this is no official whatsoever. It Just, is several hundreds. It's I, oh, I okay. think it's close to a thousand dollars for the fine. Yeah, it, it has been increased tremendously lately. So yeah, and, and they do a lot of checks because that's a good way for the local council to raise some tax money. Yeah. So they check that a lot because it's so easier. Can it change by area of New Zealand? Yes, it does. Oh, so that's what we okay. have. Like that's even even on our website, which we talk about that quite mm -hmm. a lot. Um, we kind of give you the general idea, and for each of the region, we actually point out to this specific page on the bylaw of the local council mm -hmm. website, okay. which usually has a map, and we'll tell you the red and the green areas and where you can be. And that changed so regularly that even for us, it's it's very impractical for us to be able to just publish those things all the time, and we just send you straight away to the council website because by the time you're yes. planning your trip to the time right. you're coming to New then it might have changed um so that's why we, we do it like that on the website because it's it just changes so often okay no yeah. that's really good to know so i'm definitely gonna need to read that um make sure that you use like facebook backpacking groups 
is helpful. Yeah, people it's that a great are way to meet friends. And you can meet people. And, yeah. Yep, that makes sense. I even find somebody that's sitting in the car at the end of the trip and be able to get a good deal out of it. Just make sure you check the car well. But yeah, there's plenty of, of good good opportunities that you can get, like okay. surfboards on the cheap, a guitar if you feel like you want to be that white boy with dreadlocks playing guitar at the back of the hostel. There's always one. You know, you need to be <laughs> you need to be that cliche. One. You need to be that cliche, right? So one of you guys <laughs> have to do that. So you know, maybe you want to be that guy. So yeah. I just, yeah, you need to be the one that comes in and you're like really good at guitar. Yeah. And you're like, move over. Yet you have met that one. But, you know, the one that does scratchy scratchy, there is many of those. <laughs> Scratchy, scratchy. Okay, I can tell you wear your shoes out. Yeah. Okay, I just want to say one thing with this is make sure that you get, if you get really nice hiking shoes, that New Zealand isn't the first time you put them on. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's 100% sure. Make sure you test your hiking shoes a, a lot. Yes, yeah. a lot. But yeah, aside from that, yeah, do a lot of hiking. It's a uh, free activity in New Zealand. It's really awesome. Yes, and wear them out because it's yeah. so good. Um, and load up on the free activities. Obviously, most of the most amazing places in New Zealand are free to yep, begin with. Definitely. All of the beautiful outdoors. Um, but yeah, there is even some iconic activities in New Zealand which are free. You can check out the Te Papa Museum, which is the uh, National Museum in Wellington, which is an absolute gem of a museum. It it's is, free it's to great. visit. Um, and they, the Wellington Museum right next yep. to it is also great. Yep, there is also a fantastic um, um, gannet colonies, which are absolutely amazing to, yeah, to watch. Colonies, uh, all yeah. the seal colonies are all free. There's really a lot of free things to do. And to be fair, that's the thing that we talk the most on the channel. People always ask us free things to do, obviously. But yeah, oh, there's a ton of free things to do uh, around New Zealand, which are fantastic. So load up on those and just sprinkle those expensive activities along the way. And yeah. that'll help you make your itinerary around New Zealand exceptional and not too expensive. Let's see. We get some other tips are uh, be okay with being less connected. You kind of touched on yeah, that. Yeah, be okay that's, that's okay. No Wi-Fi. That's, that's okay, okay not to be on Instagram. You anymore. will survive. By the way, what's your TikTok handle in case you guys don't follow her yet? <laughs> what is it? Um, I'm Kiwi Americans across all social. There you just go. So, you know. so make sure so you follow her on TikTok. On. You know, so if you get, you know, if you get network at that point, right, you've got to say thank you for to Tara for yeah. organizing all those tips for you guys. So yes, there, you there are. A, there, well, it's a lot of differences between you. So yeah, it would be a lot of tips. <laughs> <laughs> on surviving your way through New Zealand. That's good. Um, and then make sure you declare, declare when you get off of the uh, plane. It is expensive not to declare things. Expensive. That, yes. Yeah, so, so yeah, so point. we talk about it in some other uh, video yeah. of yours, but yeah, make sure to declare um, things if you're not sure. You know, when you enter New Zealand, there is things that you need to declare at uh, custom and biosecurity. The biosecurity rules in New Zealand are really tight, so make sure that you declare it in case of doubt because if they catch you, and you haven't declared it, then you will be fine. If they catch you mm -hmm. and you haven't declared it, they will ask you to surrender the item, but you won't be fined. And they do right. catch a lot of So just of declare. People. When in so, doubt, declare. Exactly. That's what you should do. Yes. Um, and get an F postcard. It's an electronic funds transfer point of okay. sale is what it means. Yes. Yes. And yeah, uh, definitely. Why do you recommend that? Uh, just because it will save you a lot of money. I've seen Americans that came here for a gap year and entire year and use their US credit card for all of their purchases. Oh, because you're and paying the fee every exactly, time. Exactly, every oh, single time you pay okay. the fee. So when you come here on the gap year, even if they tell you it's a no-fee credit card, this and that, even with the exchange rate, the bank is going to make some money. If they do no fee, it's not at the goodness of their heart. They are bankers. Uh, they, they, I mean, let's be honest, right? So know, they will I make some money out of it. Um, uh, so, so yeah. So just do make sure that uh, that you are open yourself a New Zealand bank account, especially mm -hmm. if you're going to be working here. It's going to be easier to get paid. Oh, yeah, that's true. And uh, get an f -post card because that will definitely save you a lot of money on and, the And just like paying for things in New Zealand are, is so easy. You literally just transfer money money into people's accounts so if you buy something that you need you know from like trade me or facebook marketplace you can just i mean yes get a bank account yeah definitely if you're especially here for a year and this may be like your only time that you ever get to new zealand so make sure that you plan it out you think through um and just you know that i think it's helpful to and what i've had to do that here because you can't afford everything here that you definitely want to do so you have to pick and choose and so if it's like the only time you ever come, you're going to want yeah, to do it. The, the, the only reason why I did this tip, uh, especially at the end, is like, yeah, okay, we just talked about uh, about saving money and try to, you know, count dollars and dimes right here for like the last 20 minutes. I also want to remind you guys that you're only going to be in New Zealand for like one time. Yeah. If you're here for one time, 
it's okay to spend some money. So, yeah, you yeah. know, treat yourself to the couple of things that you really do want to do. Right. So, yeah, save money on, like, all those very easy tips that we talk about when making food and all these kind of things. But treat yourself. You, you're you probably not going to come back to New Zealand. It's an absolute luxury to be able to fly all the way across That's the world true. and have a once-in-a-lifetime experience. And, you know, then life will co- catch up when you all get back home. And uh, yes. you'll be, uh, you know, you'll be grinding to the... Yeah, it's like our family motto is you can sleep when you're dead. Just keep going. Oh, here you go. Um, <laughs> do that. Do that. Um, that said, so, yeah. you should have seen her face this morning. She was clearly needing more sleep. Needing more sleep. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, I hope that these tips were helpful to you this week. And comment below if you have tips or things that you wish you would have known when you came on your gap year or if you've traveled in another country or anything would be helpful. And thank you for Robin for joining us today. Uh, that was really great. So anyway. Hey. And another common prompt for you guys, if you want to tell us below what's going to be the most expensive item on your whole itinerary, I'd be curious to know what you guys are willing to spend money on and what you're more keen to Ooh, I like that. Yes, comment below that. that. All right, sounds good. We'll see you next week.